Now for practically every game you create, you're going to want to save player settings. These are things like the player high score, whether the player has reached a particular level or not, maybe the player name, the volume levels of the game so the player can control the balance between music and audio, and whether the game's running in full screen or windowed mode, these are just an example of some of the settings you might want to let the player save so that when they play your game again in the future, these settings are restored. In this movie, I'm going to show you how to set up your Godot games so you can save player settings. Now, there are many different ways to do this inside Godot, and I'm going to show you the method using INI files, and that's because it's just so simple to set up. We're going to see how to do that using Godot and C Sharp. My name is Alan Thorne. I'm from bindy.biz. I'm a games developer with 20 years experience, and I want to help you make great Godot engine games. So let's get started. So here inside the Godot editor, we're going to be setting up our project to save and load data. In this case, I'm going to be saving the window size so that it saves a setting of how large the window is. And later, using the INI file, we could type in some new values to change the dimensions of the window so that when the game loads back, the window is resized to a completely different size. Now, we might in some cases want to actually do this where we give the player the ability to change the window size. But of course, we can use INI files to save any kinds of settings. Let's take a look at how this works. So inside this Godot scene here, I've got a very basic 2D scene set up. I've loaded in this 2D background sprite, which is based on a texture here, the background texture. Now I've set this window to be a particular size. I've chosen that by moving to Project, Project Settings. And then inside Project Settings, if I scroll down to the Display and Window, you can see that I've set the width and height of the window. The width is 1280 and the height is 960. So I'm going to leave these settings as they are. And when I press Play on the toolbar, again it loads and plays the window at this particular size. We're going to be saving the size of this window and then giving the player the ability to change it. To do this, I'm going to go to a script file to create a new c -sharp script file. I'm going to attach that to the root node of the scene, in this case, the node 2D. So I'm going to select node 2D, move to the inspector, and inside the script section, I'm going to click on the drop down and choose new script. And I want to make sure that the language is set to c -sharp, and inside the path field, I'm going to name my class. Now, in this case, I'm going to call this config INI. And INI simply stands for initialization. This has been traditionally the name of these types of files because an application loads them at the beginning. I'm going to choose create to create this new script file. And that gets loaded inside Visual Studio, or in this case, Visual Studio Code. Now I'm going to remove all of the comments because I really don't want them, just leaving us with our basic template file. Now to get started, I'm going to begin with the save function. If you're coming to Godot from the Unity engine, what we're going to be using effectively is a class that is like the player preferences class. If you're not from the Unity engine, then don't worry. We're simply going to be creating a class that allows us to save particular settings integers, strings, floats, different settings that we can save to the system and retrieve back. Let's start with the save function. So I'm going to delete everything in here right now, and I'm going to create a save function. So I'm going to choose public void, and then choose save. And inside the save function, I'm going to start by saving settings to the system. Now to do this, I'm going to need to get access to a native Godot class, a class that it gives us for saving config files. This is called the config file. So I'm going to choose private and config file. I'm going to choose that file here and choose CF for config file and then simply choose new config file like so. 
So that will automatically create a config file for us that is ready for use inside the save function. Inside the save function, I'm going to type cf dot set value. That allows us to save a value to the computer. Now we have to do some extra work. These INI files are broken down into sections. Each section has a group of properties. In this case, the width and height of the screen, I'm going to save these settings in a group called main. So I'm going to type main. Now you don't have to call it main, it can be a different group name for your sections. The next thing is I'm going to save the key that I'm actually storing. In this case, I'm storing both the width and the height. And because these are separate values, I have to save them in two separate steps. So the first step is going to be resolution. And I'm going to call this width here. And to retrieve the dimensions of the window, I'm going to choose os.windowsize.x, x representing the horizontal dimension of the window. Now, basically, I'm going to repeat this line, but for the height. So I'm going to grab this, copy this, paste it. And in this case, it's going to be resolution height, and it's going to be the Y value. Now, saving the width and height on their own is not enough. You have to specify those settings, but then you have to commit those settings in a save operation. So to do that, I'm going to choose cf.save, and then you have to specify the location on the computer where you want to save the file. Now in Godot, we want to use the user directory. So that's any name prefixed by user plus our file name. Now I want to give the developer the ability to customize the file name directly from the inspector, which means I want to add another variable. So I'm going to move to the top of the class and I'm going to add an export variable and I'm going to choose public string cf name and by default I'm simply going to call this settings.cfg for configuration and I'm going to append that name down here to the user path to save that destination. Now for our own sanity and for debug purposes I want to print the file that we saved to to the console just to confirm that we saved it and also to show us where on the computer that information is saved. So in the next line, I'm going to type GD print and I want to print to the console the location that we saved to. So in this case, I'm going to type saving data to put a space, append the location, which will be os.get user data path. Let me just find that. There it is. Get user data directory. And I'm going to add to that a forward, forward slash here and then cf name to print the full location of that data. Now, before we proceed any further, let's actually test this code. And we can do that really simply. I'm going to create a ready function that's going to run this functionality here. So I'm going to choose public override and then void and create the ready function. And inside the ready function, I'm going to call save, press command S or control S on a PC. And then I'm going to go back to Godot here to compile our code. OK, so let's take our project for a test run by pressing play on the toolbar. And when we do that, you can see our project is running. But let's take a peek at the output window and right at the bottom you will see that it has printed a line indicating where on our computer it has saved the file to. And you can see that the path is pretty long. And thank goodness for this line, because if it hadn't been for this line, we would have no clue where on our computer the file would be saved. And like my old boss used to say, never save a file in a place that you don't know because they build up over time and cause chaos. So at least now we know where to find that file. Now off screen, I'm going to navigate inside a finder window to find that file to check out its contents. And here we have it, the settings.cfg file. 
Now, by default, it doesn't open in any program at all, but I'm going to open this inside Visual Studio Code. So let's bring up Visual Studio Code and just move it to the side just a little bit. And I'm going to drag and drop the file into Visual Studio Code and just minimize that. And you can see in the left hand side here that I have the resolution width and height stored in the main section. So that is great. My code on the right hand side here is storing that information exactly where it should do, which is great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close the CFG file because I don't need to view that file anymore, at least not at the moment. And I'm going to return back to the function that does the opposite of saving and it loads back our settings. So it's going to take the, the settings inside the config file and then load them back. So I'm going to start by choosing public void and then choose load to create a load function. Should be no surprises there. In the next line, I want to in fact have a similar statement to this GD print, just again for our own sanity to indicate where we're loading from. So in this case, loading data from, and we're loading data from the same place as before. Now in the next line, I want to effectively read back the information. So to do that, I'm going to create a new vector two, which is simply going to be screen size equals new vector two. So I'm reconstructing a vector. And then for the X and the Y parameters, I'm going to be effectively loading data back from the CF class. So in this case, I'm going to choose CF dot get value. And this time I'm going to be retrieving the main section. The next parameter is I'm going to be retrieving the resolution width parameter. And then the third parameter is what should the value be if that setting doesn't exist in the file? What should be the default? And in this case, the default, I want that to be the current width unchanged. So I'm going to choose that value there. And then simply here, I'm going to close that with another comma for the second argument of the vector constructor. Now, this is going to return right now. What it in fact returns is an object value, and I want it to return a floating point value. So I'm simply going to typecast that to a float here. And I need to make sure the second parameter resolution width is also a string to make that line valid. Now I'm going to grab this second line here. So this line effectively, and I'm going to repeat it here. And this time we're going to be using that to effectively read back the resolution height. So I'm going to choose and change that from width to height. And the window size is going to be a value of Y. And there we have retrieved both the width and the height from the file. So I'm going to close that line off here. And I need to remember to put in an additional closing parenthesis for that line screen size. Great. We've now configured the screen size line. In the final line here, we in fact want to set the window screen size. So I'm going to use OS window size and it's going to equal screen size. And there you have it. That is the entirety of the load function. Pretty simple. So I'm going to save my code and I'm going to modify the ready function because what I want to do inside the ready function is I want to see if we effectively can load the file. And if we can't load the file, if the file doesn't exist, then we're effectively going to save the settings as they are. So let's just take a look at that. So inside this function here, I am simply going to say CF dot load and we're going to be loading the user data path. So effectively, that's going to be this path here. And if we can't load that, if the error is, if we're going to get an error and that error is going to be error dot OK, if it's not equal to that error, if that's not the return value we get back, then there is a problem. And I just want to make sure here there should be, uh, let's just take a look at that here. So 
in this line OK, this is underlined here, and that's because it should be a lowercase k. My goodness, C sharp is a case sensitive language. I really don't like that, but let's just deal with you know, we gotta deal with that. Okay, so it says error.ok, okay, perfect. The next thing that I want to do is if we can load back the file, or if the file can't be loaded back from the from the disk, then effectively we want to save a new version of it. Otherwise, we want to load back the version that already exists and all of its settings. And I'm just going to choose Command S or Control S on the keyboard to save that. So if we can't find the file, if there is no file on the hard drive, it's going to save one for us. If we do have one, it's going to load the settings back from it. Great. Let's just save this file here. I'm going to minimize my code. Go back to Godot here and then choose Build to rebuild our code. Great. Everything worked just as intended. I'm going to press play on the toolbar. And in this case, you can see that if you check out the output window, it's not saving data anymore. It's actually loading data back from that file. Great. Now let's see what happens if we go back to that settings CFG and begin to change the settings. We could, for example, have saved completely different settings and then loaded those back. So let's see what happens when we tweak that. So I'm going to load back the finder window here. And I'm going to load the config file into Visual Studio Code just by dragging and dropping. And let's change the resolution width to some very bizarre size, uh, perhaps 200, like so. And then I'm going to save that data and go back to my, my project here and choose Play. And now we've loaded back, this time a window that has been sized to 200 pixels wide. And you can see what this project is doing. This project is now retrieving data from the file and using that data that we have saved and committed to disk to change the window size. Of course, we can save any kind of values inside these INI files and retrieve them back to get the work we need done. And that really is all there is to it. In one single C -sharp file, we have the ability to save pretty much any data we want to an INI file and retrieve it back at any time. That is pretty incredible and powerful stuff. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. I'm Alan Thorne, part of bnd.biz. Please do subscribe to our channel and check out our game development tutorial. Plus, there's more to come. Thank you and stay tuned.